COVID-19, the pandemic, as we speak, is being spread widely. Every day, the general public and many healthcare professionals are being affected. It's our very own utmost important that we take adequate maximum universal precautions in any activity we do inside and outside hospitals. This is a real-time recording of intubation process, airway management demonstrated in a normal patient having taken precautions as an intent to approach for a COVID-19 situation. As this is a real-time recording, there will be disagreements. Correct me and help us all to improve as healthcare professionals. I will have the noted correct methods mentioned on the side of the clip as we go on. As you see, the anesthetic doctor, who is me, going to intubate this patient is in my personal protective dress with my head cover and the splash protector and being double gloved. Ideally, I should be wearing a N95 mask and goggles. Remember, all Hindu patients must be done by wearing a N95 mask. We should ideally keep two assistants, one person to give the drugs and to help with the workstation settings and also another person to give the cricoid. All the assistants must be in their personal protective dressers wearing their splash covers, goggles as well as their N95 mask during the whole process which you don't see here. As the intubation team we must be ready with the emergency trolley which I will not explain the components of it in this video. But as in a normal rapid sequence induction we must take adequate measures to maintain the patient's airway. As we generally know that failing due patient will not kill your patient as long as we maintain the airway with adequate ventilation by using a proper mask and keeping the airway patent by head tilt, chin lift, jaw thrust and ventilate the subject with the help of our assistant squeezing the bag. Make sure that we straight away use the circle circuit, not the bane, which is your Mapleson D, as we don't want too much ergonomics. Ideally, I should have all the equipments including proper laryngoscope with good light, three different size endotracheal tubes or at least two, patient's eye protection, tube anchoring tape inside the head box and also the gum elastic bougie and a stellate in case of a difficult airway. Once the anesthetic doctor gives the IV induction agents and, and saxamethonium as the depolarizing muscle relaxant as in a normal rapid sequence process, here we have the assistance giving the cricoid pressure from outside the box. As mentioned earlier, they all should be in their personal protective dressers. Most importantly, the intubating doctor should not take his hands off outside the box to manipulate the ventilator settings or, or to run any parameters in the multi-monitor by taking the hands off outside the box until the patient's airway is secure. Once the proper line of vision is taken, we need to intubate smoothly. Since I am wearing the splash protector and my vision becomes a bit hazy and I had to remove it to see the airway and the vocal cords clearly as the trachea was a bit anterior in this patient. But ideally, we should not have done it. If I have worn my goggles, it shouldn't have been an issue. Remember, we don't use the normal 5-point auscultation method here to make sure the tube placement but the capnogram is used to make sure the tube is correctly placed in the trachea. As you see, in this setting, there are too many healthcare staff inside the theatre when I'm intubating, which is not good. 
once the AIV is secured by the anesthetics and all the other parameters and the vitals are stable, the surgical team can come and start their procedure. Remember, don't panic. Keep your team drugs ready at all times. If you are a junior or a trainee, you should not attend to these patients without your consultant's prior approval. Remember, fail intubation will not kill your patient as long as you maintain the patient's airway. Let me recall what Haldane stated in 1847. Hypoxia not only stops the machine but also wrecks the machinery. Once the intubation is done, the eye protection and the tube anchoring need to be done before we take off our hands outside the box. The laryngoscope, the face mask must be put into a bag while we keep our hands inside the box. The face set of gloves must be removed and put in the bag while the assistant take adequate precautions to take this bag from front of the box and dispose them. Remember, then only you can take your hands off from the box. In this clip, we were unable to capture that, but remember that we need to practice the idea. Here you see the surgical team doing their procedure and the anesthetic workstation in our local setting. The multipara monitor showing all the vitals a sinus rhythm on ECG, a saturation of 100% and the blood pressure maintained stably and also the capnogram waveform with an optimal entitled carbon dioxide and also the ventilator is set to a tidal volume of 460 milliliters and a respiratory rate of 12 breaths per minute and an IE ratio of 1 to 2 with adequate airway pressure and also you see the laryngoscope inside the box which should have been removed before the procedure begins. As you see the surgical procedure is now over. We are ready to extubate our patient. As always we must clear the secretions gently with a suction handle and the laryngoscope can also be used to visualize clearly to help us to suck out secretions. Remember, ideally there should be two bags inside the box on either side of the patient's head. One bag to keep the laryngoscope and the other bag to place the suction handle but not on the patient's bed. Also, the decuff syringe must be kept inside the box when we intend to extubate. Once the patient is fully awake and has returned to spontaneous respiration, we can extubate the patient gently. Now we can cover the patient's mouth and the nose with the patient's mask. The laryngoscope, the endotracheal tube, the patient's eye protection pads, endotracheal tube anchoring plasters, the decuff syringe and the second pair of gloves must be disposed while we keep our hands inside the box to these bags for proper disposal. Once the bag is disposed by your assistant, we can remove the box and send for disinfection. I hope we covered most of the vital areas in this clip and thank you so much for watching till the end of our video. Let me also take this opportunity to thank the two anesthetic doctors who supported me to make this clip. Dr. Kapilanga Ratna Priya and Dr. Samira, thank you so much for your support. And also I thank Mr. Pradeep Pranil, the nursing officer who supported me. And also a big thank you goes to District General Hospital Nigambo Theatre A staff for assisting me and encouraging me to do this. If you have any suggestions, areas that require improvement and correction, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to give a like and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be safe, take care and see you all once again 
with another important video clip like this very soon.